Today, I'm going to take you through my thought process when shooting a fashion portrait on location. I'm going to share what goes through my head when selecting things like the angles, the posing, the depth of field, and the lighting. Lindsay Adler here, and let me start by explaining exactly what I mean by a fashion portrait. Well, fundamentally, when I create a portrait of someone, I treat it the same as a fashion shoot. I plan ahead for things like hair and makeup, a little bit of styling, maybe even a concept that tells a story. I never just show up like with my subject as is and try to make the best of it. Instead, I prepare, I conceptualize, and I do what I can to make it a special experience and to make the images more memorable. The focus is not just on the clothing or some part of a fashion brand, but Instead, the focus is on the individual and the idea we have crafted together for our shoot. Now, by the way, I have put a little title to this approach, which I call Fashion Flare, and I have an entire video tutorial about this on learnwithlindsay.com. Now, for the shoot, I decided to take my subject out on location to a patch of beautiful ferns that I had driven past, and they were just screaming for me to come back and photograph them. Uh, I'm usually shooting in New York, and so you know, I got really excited to incorporate a little bit of nature, a little bit of environment into my shoots. Now the problem was that I decided I wanted to travel light. Uh, I didn't want any extra lighting gear, maybe just a single lens, and so I knew that I'd have to work my angles because those ferns that I found, they were right on the road. So let me take a moment to show you how I worked through the scene and what went through my head. So when I arrive at a scene, what I do is I take a moment to physically walk around my subject. You know, there's usually an obvious angle that I want to capture, but it may not be the most interesting one. So at first, I liked the backlit nature of the ferns, but I was struggling because the road was visible right behind her and the cars were going by. But by moving around, I was able to simplify my background and I found this flat, flattering light on the subject's face. Now, neither angle were necessarily better, but moving around helped me to create variety, to better see the scene. Many portrait photographers, what they do is they grab their fastest prime lens and they shoot wide open. And that can certainly work. It simplifies the background and whatnot, but it can also work against you, especially if the background is part of what is interesting about the photograph. So actually in the beginning of this shoot, I fell into this trap. So what I did is I grabbed my Canon R5 and my RF 50 1.2. It is a gorgeously sharp lens. And because the R5 has fantastic face and eye tracking, I knew that I'd be able to shoot wide open. So that's what I did. I started at 1.2. But then I realized I eliminated the background basically completely. Now shooting at f8 or f11, that made the background too sharp and it was very overwhelming. So in the end, I found a good balance with an f2.8. The background was softened, but not eliminated. Now when you pose your subject, it's more than just what makes the subject look good. Like that's important, you want them to look good, but you have to figure out how the pose fits with the mood, how it fits with the scene, what you wanna say and communicate about your subject. So for this shot, I actually decided to have the subject sit because when she was standing, she was so separate from the ferns, I wanted her to sit so they were surrounding her. So this limits posing a bit. Uh, and I wanted to use the natural light there, but I had to see how the posing affected the light on the face. So basically, when she was sitting there with her chin down towards camera, the top down light there was, it just created dark shadows in her eyes. It was not flattering. But by having her lift her head up, maybe turn a little bit to the right of the frame, she was able to capture the soft overhead diffused light. It was beautiful. Now I found that sometimes if you're posing your subject, just lifting their chin up, if there's no reason, it kind of looks weird. So I either have them move or pose to try to make it look like it makes sense. So what I did is I had her pose her hands above and near her face, almost like she's extending and stretching towards the light and therefore the light would be flattering and the pose would make that, that position make more sense. Now once I get a good standard shot, I always try to get something different, something more creative. One way to do this is just to use direct sunlight. Portrait photographers are generally afraid of sunlight because it can be harsh on the skin, it can make the subject squint, but I love it. It allows me to play with shadows and get creative. So here what we did is we grabbed one of the ferns and we held it close to her face and it cast this beautiful, intricate pattern on her skin. I love these results, especially in high contrast black and white because it's something that's unexpected. It's something unique and that's what makes it special when a client works with me. So to put it all together, I approach a scene, I move around to find my angles. Then I figure out what I want to emphasize and how my lens choice and the aperture will direct the eye in the frame. And from there, I figure out how I want to pose my subject, how I want to flatter them, how I can create a pose that creates lighting that is flattering on their face. And once I get a shot that I'm really happy with, 
I dare myself to try something new and unexpected, perhaps playing with direct sunlight and shadows. Now, if you'd like to see the gear used in this video, check out the links below or visit adorama.com. Now, be sure to stay tuned. I've got a lot more coming your way. See you next time.